Thank you for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. And I just asked uh, Jared McMichael, head of the School of Engineering at GMIT, just to give us a, a final vote of thanks. Thank you. Always an unenviable task when people have travel plans uh, and are anxious to get home or back to work. So we still have an audience and I'll just say a few words and then I'll finish by thanking uh, everyone involved in this conference. Um, we had a fantastic day um, from a range of speakers who not only provided us with the trends, uh, the information and the changes that are occurring in the built environment and the construction sector, but more valuably, they actually gave us their opinions, some of them pretty transient uh, in terms of the challenges we've still to ma make, uh, some professions, uh, some public bodies, uh, and other stakeholders in the sector that still have more weight to add to resolving the challenges. We heard from our president this morning about uh, balanced economic development and the important importance of that in terms of uh, not letting Dublin uh, overshadow our economy. Uh, that's also evident in the fact that uh, there was an infrastructure deficit, uh, as we all know, every time we try to use appropriate services. Um, so th that theme continued in the morning, which was really a strategic overview. We heard the good news about the 20% growth projected for 2017 in the construction sector as a, as a, as a whole. Uh, but we also heard about the challenges that were emerging, such as uh, finance, skill shortages, uh, and in the context of uh, public procurement, uh, the cap that is actually on uh, capital uh, expenditure for the government as a result of what happened uh, over the last seven or eight years. We had a very interesting survey that we were told about, uh, in particular, uh, which were the biggest construction sectors, and the most interesting one for me was agriculture. Uh, it's ubiquitous and it's diverse. We tend to think of it in the same context as housing, but it's a, obviously very important for our economy. Uh, and we need not to forget some of those. We also heard about apprenticeship, uh, perhaps in terms of the skill shortages, but also in terms of uh, recruitment tool. Uh, and the changes in government policy that are coming our way. We got a detailed breakdown of the construction sector in terms of the actors, uh, the percentage contribution, and the contribution to GNP. We're still way behind the OECD average of 12 to 14%, which would be the normal construction activity for uh, an advanced industrial economy. So, we appear not to be repeating some of the mistakes of the past in that context. And then we also had a number of sessions that really focused down into some of the, the changes that are occurring in the sector. Um, these themes such as BIM, uh, lean, uh, public works, public procurement, uh, the importance of uh, market research and, and active research in terms of improving uh, pr procedures, practices, and hence performance uh, are, are all very important. So we had a number of case studies uh, and a number of um, expositions of how some of these new tools and techniques are helping to change the industry, um, not just in terms of productivity, but in terms of uh, quality as well as we heard. So I'll just finish by saying a few words about how GMIT might respond to, to what we've heard today. Um, and in some sense, in higher education, you would expect us to be ahead of the curve in terms of practices. But of course, while we might think we know what happens in industry, that's not the case. So in other respects, we're actually behind the curve. Uh, we have always placed huge importance on the importance of work-based learning. And I'm proud to say that our construction program, our four-year honours co construction program, 
uh, pioneered this in the School of Engineering. Over the last few years, we've taken that up and extended that across engineering and, in fact, across the Institute. Um, from what we've heard today, there's a huge amount of learning by simply practicing um, the tacit knowledge, uh, the things that they don't teach you in college that you actually need to know to be effective and to like your job and to continue to develop your, your professionalism in the sector. We are actually extending that to apprenticeship. As you know, the government have announced a, a new program for, for new apprenticeships, uh, which goes beyond the craft apprenticeships, most of them actually associated with the construction sector, uh, to level six on the national qualifications framework. And the idea with these new apprenticeships is that they're going to be industry-led, so you, industry, will actually have to pay the apprentices. Uh, the government will pay for the on-campus uh, training and education, but you will have to participate in that. Uh, and to some extent, unlike the craft apprenticeships, where there's a very formal partnership of uh, SOLAS, uh, the Institutes of Technology, and uh, the social partners, uh, the partnership will be very much put together by the deeds of the industry, the sector, the roles and responsibilities, and it can go beyond level six, right up to level 10. So we're talking about the development of not just craft apprenticeships, but cognitive apprenticeships, and perhaps mixed craft cognitive apprenticeships, depending upon the skills profile requirement. We think that that will also help us, because three times today, speakers mentioned retention, the student retention rate. And it's about 80% from first to second year in higher education in general. Unfortunately, in the School of Engineering, in GMIT and elsewhere, it's less than that. It varies between 55 to 65%. So we feel that the new apprenticeships perhaps are another way of addressing some of the challenges that we've had that we haven't been able to address through our own program structures, design, uh, and entrance qualifications and then retention initiatives that we actually have on the ground. And finally then, going back to the very first session with the president, he mentioned the new STEM building. We heard about the 80 billion uh, infrastructure deficit. Uh, that, that also pertains to higher education. Uh, and these institutes and universities have been slowly uh, eviscerated uh, with the decrease in the unit costing that we get and the scarcity of capital allocation. So that's going to change with the growth in GMP, but there's a huge catch up to do in terms of that deficit. Uh, and the first building that's in the plans for the GMIT program to 2030 is the STEM building. Uh, and we hope that it's going to be an exemplary building, uh, a building designed for scientists and engineers and built environment students to work in and that the building itself will be their laboratory, that uh, the building will be a live building in that sense, that the building performance and all the systems in the building and their performance will be monitored in a laboratory, energy and building performance typically, uh, and that the students can actually uh, conduct experiments on the building uh, in a way that people would not have thought possible, as well as analyze the data. And this is crucially important, of course, in the development of the life cycle tool planning that has occurred, um, part of those competitive forces that I mentioned earlier that are changing the construction sector. So it just remains for me to thank you uh, and a number of stakeholders in our conference here today. The first one I the first body of people I'd like to thank are the, the speakers. Uh, we've had very informative sessions, challenging in terms of their views and opinions and what they think needs to happen that uh, in some cases isn't happening. So thank you for that. I also want to thank all the participants from industry. And the interesting thing about that is that 
it's by now apparent when you talk to people that the conference in the west of Ireland has become a permanent fixture uh, and that people are using it in a way that these permanent fixtures are. That it's not just about the presentations, it's also about meeting people uh, and networking and finding out who's doing what, the tacit knowledge that everyone needs to get on with their life and to benchmark their own performance. I also want to thank the sponsors. And in a sense, we actually have come of full age because if you look at the bottom of your brochure, you'll find quite a row of logos ranging from professional bodies, uh, contractors, public bodies, and consultants. And they have participated uh, in the sponsorship of the program. And they wouldn't do that if they didn't think that it was good value for the sector and how they operate within the sector. So we really have come of age and I'd like to thank them for that. And finally, I'd like to thank all the participants, uh, including students from GMIT and their lecturers and students from the other institutes and universities that were mentioned this morning and their lecturers. Uh, students just aren't used to, as bums on seats to fill empty seats. Uh, an event like today is an important uh, dimension of their education. They're hearing about actual practice and some of the problems that occur because life's not all paradise uh, in education. Uh, it's full of challenges and problems, which is what the, the grist of being a professional is. So thank you for, for your attendance and being patient and staying the full day with us. And the last set of people I'd like to thank uh, are Martin Taggart and his team who go from good to better from year to year as this conference ages and matures. Um, and I think you'd agree with me that the conference in terms of its organization and in terms of its content uh, certainly reflects that kind of performance. So I'd like to thank them very much. <laughs> and finally, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, the other people that provide, the, if you like, the, the framework that uh, allow Martin and his team to work, um, to facilitate them, to support them, sometimes to fund them, uh, and of course, always to thank them as well. So I'd like to thank Mary Rogers, the head of the Department of Building and Civil Engineering, uh, Michael Hannan, our register, who understood the importance of professional accreditation and gave some of his time to coming down for our photo opportunity and parchment presentation to our program coordinators from the CAB, E people, uh, and to Fergal Barry, who gave a lot of his time this morning and listened to the first session of the conference, understanding how important their message and views and opinions were. Thank you. Now, I just had, I'd like to just add my own thanks and uh, just to remind you the CPD certs, if anybody's still looking for those, are still available in the foyer. And we'll see you in the first week of March 2018 for the 8th International Construction Management Conference. Thank you.